evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Harrington. Tonight on the Now Bakersfield. Some may think they're creepy crawlies, but tonight we'll show you what one local insect expert says about good and bad bugs. And Cal State Bakersfield honoring a number of faculty members tonight. A look at who. Plus, the circus is coming to town. What's in store for your entertainment and how you can get tickets. That's all ahead on the Now Bakersfield. Chris. Topping our lineup here on the now, taking phone security beyond our thumbprints. We're getting a look at the new ways we could soon keep our info protected on our devices. And a mom's making a push to save more lives after her two children were killed in a crash involving a semi, the new device that she wants on all tractor trailers. And you may have seen the offers for free money from your bank, which sounds great. We're going to check out the best options for you right now and what you need to watch out for before you sign up. That's coming up ahead here on the now. Good evening, Farm in the City. That program welcoming thousands of students at the Kern County Fairgrounds today and tomorrow. The program uses an interactive farm to teach kids about growing food, even down to the insects that could help or harm a plant's growth. The Now's Amanda Mason met with an insect expert who shared the importance of bugs, but also how to manage your pest problems at home. I'm at the Kern County Fairgrounds where students had an opportunity to see bugs up close, like these butterflies right here. They also had a chance to learn the difference between good and bad bugs. By the time people are parents, you know, they've learned that bugs are bad and they should squash them. And, um, you know, hopefully we can teach children uh, a little more in depth about the value of, of insects and, and, and the diversity there. David Haviland, an entomologist at the University of California's Extension, who studies insects and helps farmers manage agricultural pests, spent his time at the fairgrounds for the farm day in the city, teaching children about good and bad bugs, displaying more than a thousand insects you can find in Kern County. Good bugs are um, bees and butterflies. Every single insect plays a role. You know, even if all, it, even if its only purpose is to get eaten by something, everything is important. As the temperatures rise, bugs start to appear. So insect development depends on temperature. So in the winter when it's cold, they don't really develop. So we don't really see a lot of insects. So right in the spring, right when it warms up is always an exciting time. But some insects, like grasshoppers, cockroaches, and ants, can become pests at home. Haviland says his approach to dealing with pests is called the integrated pest management. So in most cases in your yard, for example, you don't really need to do anything. The good, there's good bugs, there's the bad bugs, the good ones eat the bad bugs, you're done. Um, but in other cases where you do need to manage something, uh, the University of California actually has phenomenal guidelines for this written for homeowners. The free guidelines for homeowners and farmers are online, written by scientists and professors from the University of California, with a step-by-step -step guide and breakdown of each insect in Kern County and how to manage or get rid of them. Haviland says as cockroaches and ants start to appear in April, you can find solutions on how to get rid of them through step-by-step -step videos on how to set traps and also keep you and your family safe. Having a problem with your plants the website has a plant guide people can use to assess any damage and find solutions. No matter what bug you find in your backyard, eight-year-old Carver Williams has some great advice. I would say if you ever come approach a bug that you have never seen in your life, just respect it. For the now, Amanda Mason, 23 ABC. Good tip there, and if you're looking for even more tips on how to get rid of pests, visit our website, turnto23.com. We've posted a link there for you. Well, a handful of educators received high honors today. They were inducted into the second CSUB Faculty Hall of Fame. The five inductees were recognized with the Distinguished Faculty Awards for their contributions to the university. Those inductees include Dr. Helia Corral, Dr. Jeannie Harry, and inducted posthumously were Dr. Gary Kessler, Dr. Edwin Sasaki, and Dr. Mark Thomas. Organizers of today's event say it's important to recognize the role of prof that professors play in a person's life.
Professors uh, have such a profound effect on people's lives, and I think that uh, we really need to remember and honor those who have have gone beyond the, 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 what's needed and, and, and done more. Today's celebration was held at the Walter Stern Library at CSUB in the December Reading Room. Tomorrow, city staff will be hosting a workshop where community members can learn more about bicycle and pedestrian safety. It's happening from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Kern County Superintendent of Schools Building on 17th Street. Light refreshments will be provided, and the workshop is free and open to the public. For more information, be sure to visit the City of Bakersfield Facebook page. And if you're looking to get your child immunized, head over to the New Life Church tomorrow. They're holding a free child immunization event from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. They're located on 4201 Stein Road. Well, tomorrow marks the ninth annual day of giving at Jersey Mike's across Kern County. And the best part is if you stop in for a bite to eat, the cost of your order will be donated to a local charity. Specifically, the two charities benefiting include the Wounded Hero Fund, Kern County, and Honor Flight, Kern County. So whether you order a sub, a catered meal, or just a bag of chips, they say the entire amount you pay is donated, not just the profit. You can stop in all day tomorrow, March 27th, at any of the five locations in town to participate. Well, excitement, laughter, and memories await you this week at the Garden Bros Circus coming to town tomorrow. Check this out. How cool is that? This year, the show is all new. There will be three rings bursting with special effects and performances, including Chinese acrobats, motorcycle tricks, aerial artists, and of course, all of the classics like clowns, jugglers, and elephants. The shows are happening tomorrow at 4.30 and 7.30 at the Kern County Fairgrounds. We have a link to buy your tickets on our website, turn23.com. Well, it happens to most of us. Your username, your password, it gets stolen. New technology is creating a roadblock between hackers and your personal information, and Annie Taylor explains how behavioral biometrics are making it harder for the bad guys to determine to steal your identity. When you're using your phone without realizing it, you're holding it at a certain angle, you're typing and pressing on the screen, all in ways that are distinct to you. And there's actually a new technology out there that's saving your behavior to help protect you from hackers trying to pose as you online. Data breaches are happening every day. A lot of information is on the internet in regards to usernames and passwords. After speaking with Robert Capps with New Data Security, they're the company behind this cool technology, he says if a hacker gets a hold of my username and password because their behavioral ways are different than mine, well, they're going to face some roadblock questions like, what's your social security number? What's your dog's name? Or maybe, what's your mom's maiden name? Just be assured that if you're you're banking with the larger banks, you're doing business with the larger e-commerce providers, health insurance companies, um, social media networks, they're all starting to adopt technologies like this to passively identify you and, and to make sure you're the only one accessing your account. Best part about this is whether we know it or not, we are being taken care of. There are services out there that we don't even know about that are keeping our identities safe. Thank you so much, Robert. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm Annie Taylor reporting. All right, Annie, thank you. And McDonald's is trying to get customers back with more personalized menus. How about this? The restaurant, it plans on using AI to create drive through menus that change depending on the weather, how busy the restaurant is, and the time of day. It'll also recommend extra items depending on what you've already ordered. All right, more in our lineup now. A mom's push to try to save more lives after her two children were killed in a crash with a semi-truck, the new device that she wants installed on all tractor trailers.
Well, now's the time of year when it does start to get more expensive to fly. Travel research app Hopper is predicting the average round trip ticket is going to be $229 in April, which is up from $218 in February. Now, you still can save if you don't fall for some common traps when you're planning your upcoming trip. And then now's Andy Taylor's here with that. Chris, first off, you may think you'll deal with the hassle and the extra time of having a layover because your flight will be cheaper. That used to be the case, but it's not anymore. Expedia and Airlines Reporting Corporate Corporation just checked this out by looking at tickets bought last year. They found there's really no correlation between the number of stops and what you're paying for the ticket. Hopper also studied this recently and found nonstop flights are cheaper in about one of every three searches. And you heard of this one before book on a Tuesday to save on your flight that used to be the case but again not anymore Hopper found Tuesday is the cheapest day to buy a flight for just around one and a half percent of routes really what you want to focus on now is the time of year you're flying and the day of the week to try to save once you're ready to book your flight well you may see all those blocked out seats closer to the front of the plane and wonder how can I get one of those? Travel website, The Points Guy, recommends you keep checking the seat map for your flight after you buy your ticket. And you can do this on your airline's app. People end up moving around, so another better seat may actually open up. And talking with the gate agent once you get to the airport is another way. And they may be able to move you around then, too, and get you out of that middle seat. All right, Andy, thank you. Let's start the, the Now News feed here with Facebook removing more accounts that appear to be spreading fake news. Social Network says it took down accounts from countries like Iran and Russia. Facebook says the accounts spread what they call coordinated, inauthentic behavior. Another top-tier university is in trouble, and this time it's Duke. That school is going to pay a $112 million settlement to the government. Federal prosecutors say a Duke research technician faked data in studies it brought in millions of dollars in federal grants. NASA canceling what would have been the first all-female spacewalk. Two female astronauts that were going to do this walk on Friday, but they found out that they wear the same size space suit, and NASA says only one of the suits is available that day. Well, it seems simple enough. People are still leaving their key fobs inside their vehicles, and they're inviting thieves to just drive off with their cars. A report from the National Insurance Crime Bureau shows from 2013 to 2018, the number of cars stolen that way, it's up 88%. Could actually be higher because sometimes people are just too embarrassed to admit how their car got stolen. So they don't tell police or their insurance that they left the key fob in the car. Well, we've all been there. A system upgrade pops up on your smartphone and you ignore it, but iPhone users shouldn't wait to update to the new iOS. That's because iOS 12.2 is full of security fixes. Of the 51 fixes, the most notable now prevents malicious applications from recording your surroundings by accessing your phone's microphone. The new operating system also pauses FaceTime calls when you leave the app. Well, M&M's filled with a hazelnut spread. Need we say more? Yes, please, is what we're saying, because the iconic chocolate candies are adding a new flavor that will have Nutella fans feeling the love. Mars announced hazelnut spread filled with M&M's will debut next month. But if you can't wait until then, head to social media Saturday for a chance to win a pack before you can buy them. Sounds delicious. Be sure to use the hashtag GoHazelnutty, and within a few hours, a pack could arrive at your door. Door. Hmm. Anyway. Hopefully it's this weekend when the weather's nice, you can kick back and enjoy your hazelnut spread M&Ms, Allison. That sounds absolutely fabulous and temperatures are going to be feeling so great this weekend. We just need to get through our next system that is going to be moving into the region tomorrow. This is a low pressure system that is still just off the coast. You can see there is a pre-front that is actually bringing some precipitation to northern California, but for us here in Kern County, we are staying dry, looking at cloudy conditions, but winds are picking up, especially in our desert cities. Actually, tomorrow they could be seeing gusts reaching up to 40 miles per hour. But this low pressure system is going to be making its way into the region early tomorrow. Well, really late tonight, continuing throughout the early morning hours on Thursday. But the bulk of this precipitation is going to be staying north of Kern County, bringing them a bunch of rain and some mountain snow. But for us here in the valley, it looks like we could be suffering from 
our infamous rain shadow. So most of that rain will be evaporating before it hits the ground here in the valley. But this system will be pushing into Kern County just a little after sunrise tomorrow, continuing throughout the evening on Wednesday. Most of that rain is going to be falling in the mountains. And then could be seeing some lingering showers throughout the day on or throughout the early morning hours on Thursday. Again, those winds are going to be picking up through the passes into Hatchby, as well as down in our desert cities. So just how much rain will we be seeing here in the valley? Well, not much, maybe a few hundredths of an inch. It looks like the mountain communities could be seen up to a tenth. But we will have good air quality tomorrow with an AQI of 50 here in the valley. And temperatures are going to be down slightly from what we were seeing today. 72 degrees as a high on Wednesday, down to the upper 60s on Thursday and Friday. And then look at this. Sunshine is back on Saturday and Sunday. Sunday and temperatures will be back to the upper 70s, potentially hitting 80 degrees by next Monday. Chris? Their children were killed in these devastating crashes. Their parents warned that the same thing can happen to anyone on the road. And now those parents are giving lawmakers a first look at just how they can help save lives. Corey Rangel showing us how this protection would work. The pictures are horrific. The stories behind them are heartbreaking. 17-year-old Analia and 13-year-old Mary died in the backseat of their car after a truck hit them and pushed the car underneath a tractor trailer. Their mother, Mary Ann Carth, is haunted by it. It's a very devastating crash. It's like the most devastating you can have. Lois Durso also lost her 26-year-old daughter, Roya, in one of these same types of crashes. Her hair was on the tires of the, um, of the trailer. So we know that it was, it crushed her. Eric Hines' 16-year-old son, Riley, died on his way to marching band practice after getting trapped underneath a tractor trailer truck. He went underneath the trailer. Uh, his car got drugged for a half a mile until it was engulfed in flames and the fire killed him. Tragedy brought all three parents together. Now, perseverance pushes them forward as they take steps to try to stop these types of crashes. Marianne and Lois organized this crash test in Washington, D.C. It comes just weeks after members of Congress reintroduced the Stop Underrides Act, which would update and strengthen tractor-trailer safety laws, including requiring the trucks to have guards on the sides to help prevent cars from ending up underneath them. Seeing is believing and to, for, for them to witness with their own eyes, with their own ears, and to have it be something that they could see a crash into the side of a trailer with a side guard and without and see the life, life and death difference. Past legislation has stalled, but the parents hope this dramatic show and tell will be enough to get Congress to take action. Tests have shown when installed properly, guards can make a difference and keep cars from sliding underneath tractor trailers. It's not the crash that kills, it's the underride. And if you can prevent the underride, um, there's a chance that the um, vehicle occupants will survive. Groups representing the trucking industry say they have concerns about the costs and say the guards will add extra weight to the trucks and make it more difficult to maneuver them. But the parents here today say those concerns will not slow them down and they remain driven to save lives. I lost my son. I don't want somebody else to go through this tragedy. I mean, this, this, these are preventable deaths. In Washington, D.C., I'm Corey Rangel reporting. Powerful stuff, Corey. Thank you. Let's start the news feed. And a new study is raising concerns about women finding out about diseases later in life. The Danish study found women are diagnosed with several diseases like diabetes later than men. Researchers aren't sure if that's because of genetics or issues in the healthcare system. A group of Wisconsin students who were pictured giving the Nazi salute in a picture that went viral going on a very important field trip. Students went to a Holocaust museum in Illinois, and along with the field trip, the school also brought in several speakers to teach lessons against hate. Snacking, it can be a problem, but if you are trying to cut back, a new study says rethink your sleep. The journal Current Biology says sleep deprivation, that can really lead to cravings, and researchers pointed to those who snack late at night, before bed, as a big thing that can lead to weight gain. Well, a cold case out of Montana is finally solved after 40 years with DNA evidence. Well, Linda and her husband, Clifford Bernhardt, were found dead in their home in 1973. The DNA was first discovered in 2004. No match was found in the FBI database then, but in 2015, investigators brought the DNA to a lab that compared samples through a public genealogy database. 
The DNA belonged to a man named Cecil Caldwell, who used to work with Linda. Police still have not found a motive. All right, finally in our lineup today, you may have seen the offers for free money from your bank, which sounds awesome, but we're going to have what you should be checking out to make sure you have your best options available and what you need to know before you sign up. That's next here on The Now. If you're shopping around for a new bank, just know that interest rates aren't the only perk that's out there. Many banks are offering hundreds of dollars just so you open an account. But how can you get this free money? Well, money experts at NerdWallet, they say the perfect savings account pays a bonus and offers a high interest rate. Now, it is worth looking into banks online. Those do tend to have higher rates, usually around 2% more. Now, they may also offer lower account fees. NerdWallet looked into the best offers out there right now. Wells Fargo will give you $400 for opening a checking account. That is as long as you have direct deposit. HSBC, that'll give you $200 if you open a choice checking account, but you do need to deposit at least $1,500 within the first month. Now, if it's really a credit card you're looking for, the Chase Freedom Unlimited card is offering both a bonus and a high cash back rate. If you spend $500 on the card during the first three months, you'll receive $150. Now, depending on how much you spend during your first year, you may receive up to 3% cash back. Now, before you sign up for a new account, make sure you're meeting all the requirements. Someone will offer that cash bonus if you've had an account with them before. Well, the husband of a former model and restaurateur, B. Smith, has been crit uh, criticized recently for having a girlfriend while he cares for his wife who has Alzheimer's. Now, there are other couples dealing with really difficult family situations, and tomorrow we're going to get into the discussion about the importance of early detection of Alzheimer's and outlining your wishes while you can.
Working on for tonight, coming up tonight on 23 ABC News at 11, Bakersfield City School District deciding to bring back a limited summer program after pushback from parents. We're taking a look at what this program will include and what it could mean for your student. Again, that's coming up tonight on 23 ABC News at 11. In the meantime, though, we have some pretty comfortable temperatures tonight and this week. Yeah, really not too bad. We are tracking our next system that's moving into the county. So that's why we're seeing all these clouds, but still pretty warm 67 degrees right now here in Bakersfield. So tomorrow as this storm brings some scattered showers with very light rain possible still in the 70s and then dipping Perfect. into the 60s. Awesome. Looking forward to those temperatures. That's going to do it for us on the now. We'll see you back here tonight at 11.